The last thing is the Groucho thing, and you're running out of your time here, I see. You've got about right. five minutes. <laughs> it started in an interesting way. Ever the way. producer. Ever yeah. the producer. Well, there was a Walgreen two-hour radio show on once a year to, for a penny sale, and they got a lot of people that were stars. Radio spectacular, I guess you'd mm -hmm. call it. And Linkletter was called to do a People Are Funny stunt, and I was the producer, and so I was there, and I held the needle, which was to hand to Linkletter, which was to hand to Cesar Romero, who was blindfolded, who was supposed to put a patch on the seat of a contestant's pants. It was a very high-class stunt. <laughs> but I was sitting there in the audience watching Bob Hope and Groucho Marx reading a script, mm -hmm. funny stuff, and Bob dropped his script by accident. So Groucho dropped his script on purpose, and they were much, much funnier with their scripts dropped than they were reading the mm -hmm. stuff. And afterwards, I went up to Groucho, whom I didn't know, and said, you know, hiring you to read a script is like buying a Cadillac for the purpose of hauling coal. You don't utilize mm -hmm. your abilities. And he'd flopped four times on the radio. I said, you want to do a quiz show? He says, you mean compete with refrigerators? And I said, yeah. He says, well, I've flopped four times so far. What can I lose? And that's how we went mm -hmm. in business together to do this particular show, which was a rebirth for him because he was oh, 57 yeah. years uh -huh. old then. You Bet Your Life, conceived by the Just Heard John Goodell and hosted by comedian Groucho Marx, debuted over ABC's Airwaves on October 27, 1947. We made that show for $250 and the radio record, and I took it to all the networks, they all turned it down, because they said Groucho's flopped four times on the radio. So then, I read in the paper, here's the reading the variety again, <laughs> that Alan Gelman, president of Elgin American Compact Company of Chicago, is coming to the Beverly Hills Hotel to sign up Phil Baker for his <laughs> new quiz show, Everybody Wins is going to, see? So I called up Mr. Gelman at the Beverly Hills. I said, have you signed up Phil Baker yet? He says, no. I said, I want you to hear a record. So I took the record up to his room and played it. And he didn't know Groucho had flopped four times on the radio. He says, this is a funny record. I remember him in the coconuts. There's a pretty mm -hmm. funny man, you know. <laughs> okay. And we <clears throat> made the deal. And Phil Baker fired his press agent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's how the thing got on. Three couples were brought on stage to be interviewed and quizzed by Groucho. Each couple was given $20 and told to bet as much as they dared risk on four questions from a category of their choosing. The money would double with each successive step. Couples could win $320, go broke on the first question, or finish anywhere in between. The couple with the largest money total got a chance at the jackpot question worth at least $1,000. There was also a secret word each week, with bonus money to be divided if someone said the word while the show was on the air. Although 1947 was radio's highest rated season, the quiz show aired against NBC's Mr. District Attorney on Wednesdays at 9.30. At season's end, You Bet Your Life only pulled a rating of 13. Groucho felt uncomfortable trying to be funny on a live radio show. Goodell's answer was to record the show, which allowed Groucho to relax. The program could be edited for time later. The idea worked. The show moved to CBS in 1949. You Bet Your Life became Network Radio's top-rated quiz show, finishing the season in 11th place overall. The Groucho thing was on radio first for a couple of years before it went three into Three years. TV. Three years on radio and then um, 11 on television. Yeah. Did it go into television with Elgin American or right away with... Oh, no. Elgin American was only on... They'd go on for 26 weeks and then try to get out for the... See, they only had Christmas selling. Oh, I see. And f we just fussed along with them. And they were nice people because mm -hmm. they started us. But it was DeSoto, Plymouth, Chrysler yeah. Plymouth, that really took over there. Yeah. And they kept it for a long while, and we ran DeSoto out of business. Made it an extinct car by having so many people. Actually, it wasn't the right product. Here we had a very large mass audience, a number one, number two show in radio and television, and a $6,000 item. Mm -hmm. So we figured Tony and Lever Brothers and those people, those are the ones that could use it, and those are the ones that finally got it. Uh -huh. The contract with DeSoto Plymouth of Chrysler was worth $4 million over 10 years. 
It also moved the show to NBC Radio and TV, beginning October 4, 1950. The program remained a top 10 hit into 1954. That March, it was airing on radio Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m. The March 10th episode's secret word was street. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is street. S-T-R-E-E-T. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Teddy Roosevelt. He delighted. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first? Well, Groucho, we have some people who were chosen because they have interesting stories to tell. Uh -huh. Miss uh, Beverly Kaanapu and Mr. Ernest Ray. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome uh, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ernest uh, Rhea and Miss uh, Beverly uh, Kanapu, huh? Eh? Beverly Kaanapu. Kaanapu. Oh, I see. Kaanapu. Yes. Huh? Do you have a Hawaiian name? Is that your real name? Well, my full name is Beverly Phoebe Kamalulani Kaanapu. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Kamalulani, that means under the shade of heaven. Oh. Mm -hmm. Where were you born, Bev? I was born in Kalihi, in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm all right. How are you? But uh, <laughs> we always say that if anybody says Hawaii. Hawaii is the correct pronunciation. Huh? Hawaii or Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But over here they say Hawaii. Okay. Well, that's uh, the easiest way. Yes, it is. And it also there's no joke. I mean, you can say I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> if to say Hawaii, you're dead. <laughs> aren't the real, genuine, blown-in-the-bottle Hawaiians pretty scarce now? I've heard there aren't too many of you left. Is this true? Yes, that's very true. As for myself, I'm part Hawaiian and part German. Really? Yes. Is that so? Well, whoever assembled the part suddenly knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who are you again? I forgot. Uh, Ernest Ray. Ernest Ray, Yes, huh? sir. Oh, glad to hear it. I'm always glad to meet a man who's Ernest. Huh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Where are you from, Ernie? Uh, Billings, Montana. Uh, Billings, Montana. Montana. That's right out in the wild and woolly west, isn't it? Yes, yes, sir. You spend a lot of time busting broncos and chasing buffalo? No, I, uh, I spend most of my time practicing a flute up there. Oh, it's not easy on a horse when you're chasing a buffalo. <laughs> No. The flute, you say? You practice the flute? Uh, yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. I, are you pretty cool on the flute? Oh. Well, I, uh, I, uh, I was the best flautist in the state. The best flautist in the uh, state? Best flautist. Flautist? Flautist. Because you said you played the flute. Or what's uh, a flout? A flout is a flute. Is a flute? Yes. A flout flute? Is it? Flout a... flute. Flute is a flout. Flout is a flute. That's the same as a flute. That's the same thing. That's the well, I've learned a word tonight, flautist, huh? Yes, yes, sir. Right. And you were the best flute player in Montana. Yes, I, I was the best flute player in Montana. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. well, that's yeah. an easy claim to make. Can you oh. substantiate this claim? Well, uh, Groucho, while I was still in high school, I, uh, I entered a, a Montana, you know, the flute co contest in Montana to see who was the best flute player. And I won first chair. And then, uh, <laughs> after that, I... I you I won, won the chair, you say? Yeah. I, I won the first chair. I won the first position. I was the first uh, flutist in the, in the contest. They rated me first. Well, suppose in that contest you'd have hit a, a sour oh. note, uh, Annie. Would you have taken your flute and blown your head off? <laughs> no, I had third chair there, but I'd probably been denoted to about the fifth chair, I figure, if I hadn't done a good job. The fifth chair? I had third chair in the second flute section. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have the second float in the fifth chair section? Right? No, no. That you know, I'm was... supposed to get you confused. Yeah, well, that, that that second section, that second flute section, that's a uh, that there's ten flutists and uh, five of them got in the first ten section. Ten flautists, isn't it? Flautists, yeah. 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 Well, why do they call it flautists when it's really flutists? Huh? 
Well, that's a, that's a, a, a foreign word. It's a French word, I think. Oh, well, why don't you play the French horn, then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know how uh, to do that. Anyhow, then... Uh, that hasn't stopped the men in our orchestra from playing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've, I've enjoyed this little chat with you two, but the time has come for some more serious endeavors, like uh, winning some uh, moolah. Is that the Hawaiian word, yes, moolah? Yes, moolah. Moolah. O kala. O kala. Huh? <laughs> well, you're going to play your bet your life. You, I don't know if you know how to play your bet your life, but we made a little change in our quiz last week. You play the game this way, the same way, with the exception that we start you off with a bankroll of $100. And that, that's very nice. You can quit now if you want to. Huh? <laughs> no. Every time you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. No matter what it amounts to at the time. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected science and medicine. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Number seven. Number seven is seventy dollars. In the laboratory, what do you call the small gas burner used to heat test tubes? Flask. Talk it over. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm I'm sorry, it's oh. a Bunsen burner. Well, you lost half of your original bankroll, so you now have $50. You have $50 left in the bankroll. Now, what do you want to go for? Well, let's try number eight. Number $80. What is the scientific name for the study of plants and plant life? Talk it over. Your partners. I think it's etymology. Study of plants. And plants. Scientific name for the study of plants and plant no. life. Okay, let's try that. Etymology. No, I, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> No, oh, it's botany. What am I asleep today? You uh, lost half your bankroll again. You now have $25. 20, well, you're still in the running. Now, don't get discouraged. Now, uh, what do you want to try? $90 one? $10? $100? Yeah. Okay. Out. How much? Five, five, five. $50. What rare element do we obtain from pitch blend? Uh, let me see. I think we get radium from pitch blend. That's okay, right. Yeah. Before you change your no. mind, it's radium, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you now have seventy-five dollars. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now things are looking up a little, aren't they? Now, yeah. which one do you want to try now? Oh, we better try number nine. Ninety dollars. Uh, scientifically speaking, animals with backbones are called what? Talk it hmm. over. Yeah, what are they called? Mammals or vertebrae? Uh, Take a stab if you don't know. Uh, mammals. Oh, vertebrae, probably. Yes, it was vertebrae. I wish I could have helped you, but I couldn't. Oh. Well, you lost half your bankroll, and you wind up with $37.50. I'm sorry you didn't win more. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. You Bet Your Life aired on NBC Radio until September 19, 1956. The original TV series ran until 1961. No, Pat Madgwick. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, youngsters, to the DeSoto Plymouth.